So I'm here with uh, George Wassel, um, the writer creator of Oh Hell. Oh Hell. And um, so as, as he was telling me about it, I was thinking, you know, uh, you're probably familiar with Morning Glories where these kids are in a high school and everything seems like it's hell. Well, this high school literally is in hell. So um, why don't you tell me a little bit about the genesis of how you came up with this idea? Um. Um, actually, the story goes back uh, 20 years. Um, uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Michael Connell, who's a very well-known um, uh, music editor in the uh, film industry, he and I did a uh, script together um, that we set in uh, hell. Uh, we did it with a 10-year-old uh, boy, and so we created this whole universe with all these rules and this world. and. Um, we shopped the script around. Uh, people loved the writing, but they were going, ah, oh, we don't know about this. So we, uh, we put it away, and um, uh, Michael uh, went on with uh, doing his, uh, his music editing. Um, and I'm, if you look around, you noticed I'm older than most of the uh, uh, creators around here. Um, uh, I, if Stan Lee's here, I'm not the oldest, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but um, I retired, and my wife uh, was on the verge of throwing me out of the house. <laughs> so I took a class at UCLA with um, Nunzio de Felipe. He mm -hmm. does a, a, a lot of um, a stuff for Oni, uh, and he was teaching a class on sequential arts. And I, I fell in love with the, with the, the class. And, um, and he, he put a... It, one of the things that he does is he... Um, puts in random topics in a hat and then he passes the hat around and you draw one out and the next week you have to come in with a story on that topic. Um, my random uh, uh, drawing was a story for a 15 year old girl and um, I went home and I was beating my head against the wall and then it dawned on me if I took uh, what uh, um, uh, Michael and I had done with the imp the world we had created there put teenagers in that bam we were able to open up the story um, do a lot more with uh, you know relationships and romance and you know a lot of issues that uh, kids uh, uh, have and that was the birth of oh hell yeah well you know as I was looking through the book one of the things that I, I think is perfect about it is you know um, being a teenager does feel like hell a lot of the times because you don't have respect from any of the adults, but you feel like you should, you know? Yeah, e exactly. And um, uh, you think you're uh, grown up. Uh, you really don't. Uh, you really don't see past the immediate. Uh, right. You don't understand a lot of the things that are going on around you, and and everything is so new, and you have to learn everything. You have to learn. Uh, uh, love and all of those things and heartbreak and it, it's just yeah it's a terrible time yeah <laughs> uh, uh, what's the name of your blonde character oh oh the blonde um, uh, she is Elise. Elise Elise so so Elise kind of is a perfect segue to what we we're talking about because um, as I was flipping through the book you you know as a teenager you're in a lot of ways you're you're like an adult you know you can do adult things even though you may not be ready or you may you may be more evil than you would be otherwise you know you 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 see I don't want to give away the plot point but but she's using her sexuality to to harm one of the other characters and definitely she's not really taking it you know into account you know the what she's doing and why you know why she's doing it. she's kind of just doing it for immediate gain I, exactly exactly I mean you've nailed Elise uh, to a T and um, um, we uh, I, I we can take a shot of it sure, later on if sure. you want, but that's her potential if she levels up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and we're we're dealing with a, uh, quite a few issues. Uh, uh, our main character, our lead character, Zoel, starts off life as a dumpster baby, and so 15 years later, she still hasn't uh, <laughs> dealt with that. And uh, parents, uh, adoptive parents, have given up and ship her off to boarding school, not realizing it is actually in hell. And uh, did I did I uh, misread when I was looking at the beginning? But it seems 
almost perfectly ironic. Uh, in the beginning, she seems kind of represented as kind of a goth character. She thinks she likes everything dark. Well, how does she like actually being in hell, you know? Exactly, exactly. So, uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a story of, you know, she's got to come to terms with uh, uh, the things that happen to her don't dictate what she's going to be or what she's going to become or really define her. Right. So, so, so right now uh, you have this uh, beautiful graphic novel, very heavy, one of the heaviest graphic novels I've ever seen. Did you say it was eight issues? Uh, eight issues. Eight issues. 224 so, pages. So three more than a Marvel book and two more than an image book. Um, so is this a complete story or do you have more to go? It is a standalone story and um, as we're out, uh, the book has only been out for a, a month. We had a successful Kickstarter that allowed us to go ahead and, and print the full trade. Um, so it's a standalone, but uh, uh, I always envision the story as a trilogy. Excellent. So there may be even more stories in this universe, yeah. even though you'll have some kind of sense of conclusion when you read this. You definitely have a sense of conclusion, and um, um, each of the stories, they're not en entirely divorced. They, they are interwoven. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, like I say, we've only been out for um, uh, just under three months now with the book, and uh, we'll see how well it goes and if people uh, demand it. Uh, it's been kind of fun with the Kickstarter We've had people now sending uh, me emails and saying, when does Volume 2 come out? That's great. That, as, as, you know, I've done some creation, not necessarily at this level, but to have people want more of it is always one of the greatest yeah. feelings. It's, and as a writer, um, that's the really exciting part, to have something that you've written resonate with people. And, uh, um, I, uh, you know, I, I wanted to get something I wrote out in the world and for people to do to like it or hate it and uh, uh, not die on somebody's desk. So, so then the most important question is, if people aren't here at Baltimore Comic Con, how do they get um, copies of, of the graphic novel? Uh, well, the graphic novel is, um, um, there it is, uh, Chrysalides yeah. is volume one, uh, and you can go to ohellcomics.com. Uh, that's all one word, ohellcomics.com and uh, order it there. We've got okay. a little store and all that stuff. Perfect, so is the only way to get it direct at this time, is it on Amazon or anywhere else? Uh, not on Amazon, okay. um, and actually the, um, the people who have the uh, uh, single issue, uh, the first single issue that we uh, began with, um, were, uh, they purchased it either directly, uh, either I handed it to them or the artist, a uh, uh, very young, talented artist, Dave Hammond, um, uh, one of us handed this book uh, uh, to them. So That's really great. You, you often seem very divorced from the creator, not you, but the, the reader seems very divorced from the creator most of the time. So to be so close to the people creating the book has to create like an extra bit of camaraderie there yeah i i wish i had a better memory and i could remember the names of the people when they come back up to me but um uh, like i was in uh, san antonio last week and um uh, i had a person that i had met there two years ago they purchased the uh the single issue floppy uh they missed out on the kickstarter they showed up and they said i've been waiting for this for two years and you know they got and they, that's really 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 a, a wonderful feeling as a yeah, as a writer as a creator it's that's what you do it for that's really excellent and thanks a lot for talking to me thank well, you very much thank you